All right, guys, so this is Dexter Industries Go Pie Go 2 base kit. This was sent to me by Dexter Industries. This is a sample. I am very grateful for that. I will be doing plenty of uh, future videos on the Go Pie Go 2. Look forward to that. And they also sent me a Growth Pie Plus. It's in that box on the left. Very grateful for everything that they've sent me, and I will be doing plenty of videos uh, based on all the stuff that they sent me. And uh, in this base kit here, it comes with everything you'll need except for the Raspberry Pi and batteries. Now, Dexter Industries also sent me two Raspberry Pis, one for this kit here and one for the Grove Pi Plus. So I'm very grateful for all their help. And I went out and bought my own batteries. I think you'll, you'll need eight AA batteries. I picked up a pack of eight in my local uh, drugstore here. All right, let's take a look at this side here. You see a couple pictures of kids playing with the Go Pi Go 2 and they're having fun. I think uh, the ages are eight and up for assembly for the Go Pi Go 2. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's for adults, it's for kids. Anybody who's into these type of things will have plenty of fun. And this would be a perfect uh, project for like a uh, parent and, and their either daughter or, or son. You know, if they're interested in robotics and Raspberry Pis and electronics, they will have a blast. Now, let's look at the back here. It just shows you all the parts that are included inside this kit here. And let's open the box. Let's slide this to the side, lift this up. Comes with this red Velcro tie. We'll use that, I guess, later on. It also comes with this uh, card. It says Dexter Industries. It's time to build your robot car. First, go to our getting started guide. It gives you the URL, it's www.dexterindustries.com. Go Pi Go, and it'll give you the guide that you'll need. There is no physical uh, manual in here. Just go online, navigate to this URL, and it has the full guide you'll need with like pictures and everything. And here you also have a pair of wheels. Again, this is a robot kit, and it will have wheels and it will move around. And this comes with the kit, so I'll move this to the side right here. And we have two motors, two motors with the kit. You have the actual Go Pi Go board here. This is the battery pack, I guess, where you install all the AA batteries. And this will connect to the robot itself. Some gears and plastic stuff we'll need for the robot. Some bolts, some screws, and some more screws. And, and this here is the actual like base the foundation of the robot. This is where everything's gonna connect to. Once we built this, it'll have a Raspberry Pi, all these pieces here put together and it will be a functional robot that we can program, that we can play around with. So let's just move this to the side. And with this robot kit, there's no soldering at all. So everything just either screws in or pops in, no soldering at all. So that's perfect for anybody who hates soldering but wants to build this robot. No soldering necessary. All right guys, I'm just gonna move this box out of the way. Move up here. All right, I have the instructions on my phone here. Let's just put some of the pieces on the side here. This is everything that's in the kit here. Now, again, what doesn't come with the kit is a Raspberry Pi and batteries. I went out and purchased my own batteries. It says you will need eight AA batteries and I purchased a pack of eight AA batteries and you'll also need a Phillips screwdriver. That's all you're gonna need to put this together. And no soldering involved. Everything clips in and screws in. And that's all the parts you're gonna need basically right here. And I'm just gonna use this recipe. Oh, I have one here. I told you guys, I have like a million Raspberry Pi laying around. So I'll just use this one for now. It's a Raspberry Pi, yeah, B+. You could tell because uh, the RAM is on the bottom of the Raspberry Pi 2. So this one is a B+. All right guys, so this is the documentation. I have it opened up on my phone here. Basically says difficulty level one. It's very easy to put together. Ages 13 and up. I thought it was eight and up, but I guess it's 13 and up. Uh, it's Windows 10 basically, We're using Windows 10. Uh, languages we can use, Python, uh, Scratch, Java, Node.js, C, C++. Any programming language you're, you're familiar with, you can use to program this robot here. It's very, really simple to do, especially if you use a programming language like Scratch. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, take our acrylic base out of this bag here. 
Let's just open it up. Now you might get a kit that has like paper that peels off that protects the acrylic. Mine didn't come with it. I don't know if it's because it's a sample or this is a newer version of the kit that then the newer versions don't have that protective paper you can peel off. But Furious has that uh, protective brown looking paper like that. Just peel it off before you get started. Now this is the top part, this is the bottom part. This is acrylic, this is the base, this is the top part. We're only gonna work with the bottom part for now. We're gonna, we're gonna finish that other half later on this video, but we gotta figure out what's top and what's bottom. I don't know if in uh, the previous kits they marked off what's top and what's bottom. This one, I guess they marked off the top. We can tell that this is the top by its standoffs. And if we take this board here, this is the Go Pi Go 2 board. If we take it out of here, if everything lines up, then we know it's good. Just open this up here. Pretty cool anti-static Ziploc bag. It's the first time I've ever seen anything like it. It's like a hybrid of a Ziploc bag and an anti-static bag. So like a reusable anti-static bag. I, I kind of ripped it a little bit, but I will be, will be using it again. Now, this is the board right here. This is Dexter Industries Go Pi Go 2 board. And this is probably gonna mount like right here. But first off, we gotta figure out if this is the top. So if this is the top part, if we uh, put this down, the standoff should line up with the holes here. We have one hole here and another down here and they line up. One hole here and another there. There's one hole here and there's another hole there and they line up perfectly. So, they, so this is the top of the acrylic. Now, I guess because this is the newest version of the kit, they label the top maybe in other versions because in, in the manual that I was uh, reviewing, they didn't have this uh, etched in here that says top, so I guess they just added this for more convenience. Now that we figured out that this is the top of the acrylic base here, now we gotta get some of the screws out we're gonna be using. So let's open up the screw pack here. Let's just spill it onto here. And I do know that they send you extra of everything, so if you do lose one, don't be worried. They send you plenty of extra. That's the worst thing in the world, is you, you like missing one screw to, to complete the, the build. Then you have to specially order a screw or you have to find it somewhere in your local hardware store. But they do send you plenty of extras. So what we will need is one of these bolts. We're gonna put it under the acrylic here. Remember this is the top, this is the bottom. We're gonna put this bolt through the bottom and we're gonna take one of these uh, standoffs these metal standoffs, we're gonna screw it in here. Finger tight, we only want this finger tight, screw it in. We're gonna take another bolt and make sure we put it on this hole here. Put on this hole here. We're gonna take another standoff here. Remember this is gonna be finger tight. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna prepare our bolts. So we're gonna open up this bag of uh, heavy hardware. We're gonna take out the long bolts. We will need these bolts here, four of them. So we're gonna pair these four, I'm gonna leave them right here for now. And we're gonna need four nuts. So we're gonna grab four nuts. That, that's these little things right here. Those are four little nuts. And we're gonna place them with the long bolts right there. So I've got three and I need one more, four. Best way to uh, successfully uh, put together any type of DIY project like this is to be organized. Separate all your parts where they belong, keep everything organized and everything will run smoothly. So now that we found our four long bolts and our four nuts here, we're gonna take our nut and screw it all the way to the end of the long bolt, right here. It's gonna be finger tight by the way. Don't uh, use any pliers or anything, just finger tight all the way to the end. We're gonna do the same thing with the rest of the bolts here. And we got our four bolts with the nuts here. Now we gotta take out our acrylic tees and they're in this bag here. So open up this Ziploc bag. I'm gonna spill out the contents right here. Remember, don't mix everything together, just keep them separate. But try not to lose them. And we're going to use these acrylic tea looking things right here. There are, I believe, four of them. So I'm gonna leave them on the side here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take two of them, right? Take one here. This is, remember, this is the top now. And we're gonna slide this through here, it's gonna stop at the other end. We're gonna take the other one, we're gonna slide it, and it should stop at the other end, then we're gonna rotate this around. Now it's on the bottom part, oops. Let's lay it down gently. 
Now this is the bottom part here. We have the two T acrylic pieces through there. And each one has two holes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our bolt and we're gonna put one through each hole here. One through the bottom. One through the top. Another one through the bottom. And another one through the top. Like so, and just let it rest like that. All right, so now we're gonna actually attach our two motors. So now all you have to do is grab one of the motors, make sure that this plastic part is on the right side and it's lining up with this here. And then there are two holes here and these two holes line up with this. And that uh, the wires are facing you, pointed towards you, not away from you. All you have to do is make sure you put the bolt through the hole, the other bolt through the other hole, slide it all the way through. We're gonna take uh, our T, acrylic T thing again. And I'm just gonna turn this over so you can see. We're gonna place it through the two bolts. There are two holes on the acrylic T and they line up perfectly with the two bolts. Make sure that the thick end of the T, the actual top part of the T is on the bottom and it's laying underneath this acrylic base here. Then we're gonna take another bolt here and we're just gonna screw it on in. Remember, hand screw. Do not get any wrench or anything. Just hand screw it. Hand screwing is perfectly fine. Our motor is in. Let's do the same thing with the other side. So with the other side, we're gonna line it up the same way. Make sure the cables are facing away from you and they're meeting with the other cables and we're gonna put the bolts through the holes again. We're gonna get two more nuts and we're gonna take our other acrylic T and place it onto our bolts here. Line it up, slide it through. Remember the thick end of the T is gonna be in the base here. Make sure that you press down enough. Make sure that you press down enough so that the bolts are exposed and you can use these nuts to tighten it up. And just tighten it up with the bolts. All right, so we're pretty much done with this part. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a screwdriver and uh, it's a Phillips screwdriver and we're just gonna tighten the top, top one of the top uh, T's here, T acrylic things. And we're gonna hold the bolt with, with our finger and just enough so that it'll snugly hold it in place. It doesn't have to be super tight, but you know, tighter the better, I guess. You don't want to crack anything, just do this gently. Do the same thing with the other side, just the top part here. And just enough to tighten it as much as you can without breaking it. So it's in there pretty good. I'll do it again one more time, enough so, so that it won't wiggle. All right, next step is to take these crank wheel looking things and we're going to slide it onto here right in the middle here it fits right into this uh, shaft keep twisting it till the plastic part of this shaft goes through the wheel thing here and it only fits one way so keep turning it till it fits all right pop it in slide it through we're gonna do the same thing with the other side slide it down keep turning it until it fits line it up pop it in don't give it too much force you don't want to break anything Slide it to the back until it can't go anymore. And this part is done. All right, so now we're gonna mount the Go Pi Go board onto this chassis here. So we're gonna flip the chassis around and we're going to take our Go Pi Go and see if we can line off the holes of the Go Pi Go board here. So we're gonna, we're gonna take off this padding off the Go Pi Go here, remove this padding, and we're gonna make sure that our Go Pi Go board here lines off with the standoff. They should line off perfectly. Then we're gonna need our screws. Two of our screws, we're gonna need the screwdriver for this step. We're going to put the screw through the hole, line it up with the standoff, screw it in just a little with your finger so it locks in. Then we're gonna take the other screw, line up the standoff, put in the screw, screw it in. Now we've successfully screwed in our Go Pi Go board onto this acrylic chassis. Everything is in. All right, so now we're gonna put this caster wheel onto this acrylic chassis. Take these long standoffs, they're different sizes, so line the sizes up. We're only gonna use the small ones right now. So we're gonna take the small ones here, we're gonna take our caster wheel. So we're gonna take a bolt, right? One of these bolts, we're gonna put it through here. We're gonna take a bolt here, and we're gonna put it through the top of the caster wheel like so. We're gonna take the small rod, let's get rid of these longer rods. We're only gonna use these two smallest rods here, and we're going to tighten this up here, like so. I'm gonna grab another screw here, put it through the other side. You're gonna grab the other small rod here, twist it on, and tighten this. So now this part's gonna go here. We're gonna tighten this up with two more screws. Grab two more screws. I have one here, and I have another one. We're going to grab one of the screws, 
slide it through here just to hand tighten a little bit. I'm gonna hand tighten this one like so. I'm gonna grab the other screw, slide it through, lock it in. Then we're gonna take our screwdriver and just tighten it up. All right, so we got our caster wheel on there now. All right, so now we're gonna put our wheels on. So take the unit here, grab one of the wheels, turn it until it fits perfectly through. All right, so now we're gonna take this wheel and make sure that this lines up perfectly so that it will fit only one way. It'll only fit one way, so slide the wheel in. And you gotta be very careful. Make sure there's enough uh, clearance so that the wheel doesn't touch the bolt. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Grab the wheel. It only fits in through this plastic part one way. So line it up till it fits perfectly. Slide it through. You could, do, you could test it out by turning the wheel. And if it's not rubbing against the bolt, you're good to go. We got that part done. Now we gotta attach the battery cable here. Now we're gonna grab this battery cable. All you have to do is just plug it on to the back of this. Like so, that's it. All right guys, so now we're gonna put our battery box on to the chassis itself. So grab your battery box. It has room for eight uh, AA batteries. I have eight AA batteries. I'm just gonna fill, fill up the batteries on this box here for now. All right, we put all our batteries into this battery box here. Just throw this aside. I'm gonna grab, now these six rods here are the same size. There's only two sizes. I said three, one small, medium, and large, but they're actually only small and large. So the remaining, uh, I believe five here are for the battery pack. I'm sorry, two are only for the battery pack, which is this here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this around like so. We're gonna grab a bolt, one of these bolts or rods, whatever you wanna call them, standoff rods. We're gonna take a screw. We're gonna take one of these screws. We're gonna put it underneath this chassis here. Then we're gonna screw one of these larger standoffs into it here, like so. Hand tighten it. We're gonna grab another screw, slide it through this hole here. These are the larger standoffs, remember, not the shorter ones. The shorter ones we used for the other side. So, hand tighten these in there. All right guys, so now I forgot to use a few things. The reason I forgot to use these things is because I was watching the manual for the GoPi Go, the original, not the GoPi Go 2, which we have here. And with the GoPi Go 2, they added a few extra improvements. And since I watched the original tutorial, I overlooked a lot of these improvements and uh, we didn't install them. So we're gonna take a few steps back and uh, I'm gonna do this really quickly. Now, I'm not gonna show you uh, how to install the washers onto the bolts. Every time you use one of these uh, screws, just put a uh, washer underneath it, then screw it in. I forgot to use these washers. I went back and started using washers and uh, I overlooked it because in the original, again, tutorial, they didn't have these washers. So whenever you're using one of these screws, just add a washer to it. So just take a few steps back, start adding those washers to wherever these screws are mounted. They're not that many spots. Wherever you use a screw, again, you just use a washer. Now, these are spacers here. These are spacers for the wheel, and we're gonna remove the wheels right now, right? I'm just gonna remove the wheel. And we're gonna remove these things here, these little gears. Just without breaking it, just pop them off and slide them to the side. Now we're gonna add these spacers first on both sides. So we're gonna add this spacer here. It only fits one way. We're gonna add the uh, spacer on the other side. One more spacer on this side and the final one on this side. It just gives it a little space so nothing grinds against anything else. Now we're gonna add this part back, these little gears, slide them through right to the end. You're gonna do the same thing with this one. Slide it through to the end. By now you became a pro at this. And now we're gonna add the wheels back again. So what these little things we're doing is just adding space so nothing rubs against each other. Slide the wheels in and you don't have to worry about the wheels grinding because the spacer gave it enough room so that the wheels don't grind with the bolts. Now we're gonna flip this back over. Again, whenever you use one of these screws, add a washer to it and that's pretty much it. All right, so now we're gonna connect our Raspberry Pi to the Go Pi Go board here. And I switched off my Raspberry Pi B Plus with the Raspberry Pi 2. So I'm gonna be using a Raspberry Pi 2 for this project from now on. The way, the way we connect this is by flipping the Raspberry Pi over. You see these pins here? These pins have to match with these holes here. And all you have to do is just make sure you slide this in gently without breaking the pins. Like so, press down till they're in without breaking any of the pins. And it's pretty much in there. 
All right, so now we're going to tighten these four posts onto this chassis right here. So take these four posts, take uh, four of these uh, screws here. Remember, every time you use a screw, use a washer. I messed up the last few steps, but as long as you go back, use a washer, you're good to go. So we're gonna take one of these washers and we're gonna place it on each one of these. And do the same thing with this one. Like so. These are called posts. I was calling them standoffs because they kind of look like standoffs. I guess you could call them larger standoffs, but they're, they call them posts. So we need four posts, four screws, four washers. I placed the four washers on the screws. So now we're going to take one of the screws and on the bottom here, there are four holes. Uh, put one under this hole here, the smallest hole. And that's the one that's not uh, lined up with the other three. So take, take, the screw, place it underneath like so, hold it with your finger. Take one of these uh, posts and screw it on. Remember to use the washers. Keep screwing it on until it's tight. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Take one of the screws, I have a washer on there already. Place the screw on the chassis, hold it through with your hand. Take one of these standoffs or posts Screw it in until it's hand tight. Now, we got two more to go. And these two holes are right here. One here and one right there. So I'm just gonna turn this cable over and take one of my screws. Again, we're gonna do the same thing. Take the screw, place it underneath the chassis, uh, slide it through, hold the screw in place. Take one of the standoff slash posts, that's it. And we're gonna do the same thing with the final one. Place the screw underneath and just hand tighten this right here, like so. All right, so now we're going to install the micro SD card to the Raspberry Pi. So if you order one of these from uh, Dexter Industries, they look something like this. Or you can just open it up and they give you a SD card with a micro SD card installed in it. This is preloaded with the software that you're gonna need. Now this wasn't in the kit, but you can order this from their website. And this one is preloaded with the Raspbian for Robots software that Dexter Industries has created. So we're gonna open this up. If you're using a, a Raspberry Pi B Plus or uh, Raspberry Pi 2, I believe it uses the micro SD card. Since I'm using a Raspberry Pi 2, it, it'll take a micro SD card. So all you have to do is slide this on here like so, push it in until you hear it click. Then once it's clicked, it's in place. To, to take it out, you, you push it again and you just pull it out. All right, so now we're, we're gonna attach the canopy. This is the last acrylic piece for the GoPi Go 2 here. So the way this works is uh, when you're gonna place it on top of the GoPi Go 2 and you're going to flip it around until these two little screw holes are lined up with these posts here and make sure that uh, you can read uh, Dexter right here this little logo that says Dexter, if it, if it looks backwards, that means you have this upside down. So line all these uh, holes up with the standoffs, grab four screws and four washers, and we're gonna screw this in from the top. Place one here, screw it in. These are just a hand screw it till it's locked in. Don't screw it all the way. Grab another screw and washer, right? And then do the same thing with this side. Slide it in, try to hand screw it in till it locks in, but don't screw it in all the way. Then we're going to grab another screw and washer. I'm going to do the same thing with these two here. Slide it through, just hand screw it till it locks in. So I'm just going to screw this, and I'm going to screw this one in here a little bit till it just locks in. Not all the way. Grab another screw, another washer, slide this through. I'm just going to screw the rest of them in. All right, so we got the canopy on. All right, so now we're going to attach this battery pack to our GoPi Go 2 here. Now again, this doesn't come with batteries. I had to go out and buy my own batteries. It takes eight number two batteries. Just put them into the pack. Make sure you connect this cable that it comes with. You connect it to the back of this battery pack here. It can only fit one way. So this is like one of those nine volt battery heads, I guess. Just lock the cable onto this part here. Then we're gonna connect the cable to this part here on the GoPi Go board. There is this port here that'll fit this connector. So just slide it in, it'll connect. Now we can connect our battery pack to the chassis. There are two ways you can do this. You can do this on top, like so. Better center of gravity, better traction for the wheels, 
or you can do it under here, like so. They're, they put two uh, slots for this Velcro strap to slide through. Depending on what which way you want it, you could have it up here or you could have it down here. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to uh, I'm going to try to keep it on here for now. I'll, I mean, you can you can switch it if, if you think it looks stupid or it's not working right. You switch it. But I'm going to keep it on the front of the of the actual robot here. So slide this off first. You're going to take your Velcro strap like so, right? We're going to feed it. We're going to feed it through here, underneath. The red part is facing me. Feed it through. Pull it. There's only one way this can go through. There's a little slit, little hole on this chassis that this will fit through. This is meant for the Velcro strap. And again, there's one also up here. If you guys want to put the battery pack on top, you can do so. And I'm going to slide the other end through the bottom. I'm going to pull it. I'm going to pull it until, actually I got to pull this down more. I'm going to pull it until this part here is almost touching the bottom here. So this little thing that holds on to the Velcro strap, it's got to be close to the bottom and almost touching this chassis that's about right now we can take our battery pack and again you can put it on in any which way you want just slide it in and we're going to take this part of our velcro strap loop it around the battery pack all right stick it through here all right now you can twist this here right you can twist this here turn it give it some tension make sure the battery is tight and turn it back this way and then lock it in like so but you know again if you don't like the aesthetic of that you can not twist it, then go around this way. Make sure it's tight, and just go around this way. Again, that was locked in. You can do this a bunch of different ways. Battery pack's not going anywhere. I'm just gonna tighten it up a little bit more. I'm actually gonna do it the other way because I, I want it. I don't care about the aesthetics. I just want this to be firmly in place, and I'm gonna make sure it goes this way. Like so, so the battery pack is in. That's, that's it for the battery pack. All right, so now the final step is to connect the motors to the board. So to do that, we're gonna flip this around and each motor has two cables, a white one and a black one, right? So we're gonna separate the two. See, one white, one black for each motor. And as you can see over here in the middle, we have uh, a two pin here and a two pin here. The, the one closest to this motor is for this one. The one closest to the other motor is for that one. So. How we're gonna do this is we're gonna just turn this around like so. We're going to take our white lead or white cable and we're gonna connect it to this one right here. So the first pin, like so. Connect the black one underneath it, push it down. Not too hard to break it. So again, white and black here are for this motor and the first hole with the pins closest to this motor, these cables go to. So now we're gonna do the same thing with the other cable. See, this motor here has two cables, a white one and a black one. We're gonna connect the first, the white one, to the hole here closest to this motor. And this hole has two pins. Uh, and the white one is gonna go to the first pin and the black one is gonna go to the second pin here. All right, so that's how it's connected, like so. Let's bend the cables so they don't interfere with anything. And again, two cables, each, each motor has two cables, one white, one black, one hole closest to each motor. The pair, uh, I mean the white and black cables closest to the, its hole it goes into its place. So the first one on top is the white, the bottom black. Same thing with the bottom motor. And that's it for this assembly. All right, so now we're gonna turn on the Go Pi Go 2, see if it works. All right, so this is the power switch here. All you have to do is flip this down and you're gonna see an LED light light up. That means the unit is on. So you're also gonna see uh, the Raspberry Pi that's on top light up. See those lights right there? It's loading the software that's in the micro SD card on the bottom here and it's lighting up right now. That means that the software has successfully loaded and you can start playing with the GoPi Go.